Hey everyone, it's Carson Miller Tech here, back with another video, and in this video, I'm gonna be checking out a product sent to me by the company known as 7RYMS, or 7 Rhymes, I've heard some people say. Specifically, this is the iRay UW10. More specifically, I've got myself the A version of this iRay UW10, meaning that this has two transmitters and one receiver. There's also a version that retails for around 129 US dollars that has one transmitter and one receiver. So if you don't need two transmitters because you're not gonna be doing interviews or anything like that, then you might wanna go with the B version of this instead. Also, I didn't mention, but this one costs 189 US dollars. Here on the back of the package, you've got some of the features listed here, which I'll be talking about as well. But opening this on up inside, you've got this nice carrying pouch, which is, hard shell, that's awesome. Opening it on up, you'll see the two transmitters and one receiver. These do come in a black variant as well, so if you would prefer to have a black transmitter and receiver, then you can get that. This is how tiny this is. Look how small this is in the palm of my hand. For a size reference, I've got a Apple Watch here. You've also got the receiver down here, which is slightly larger. This supports up to six hours of battery life, whereas these only have four. They are completely rechargeable via USB-C. Up here on the top, you've got all of the accessories. Inside, you've got two audio cables. One is specifically for smartphones. Then you've also got a regular camera cable. You've also got two wired lav mics that can plug directly into the receivers. So if you don't wanna just clip the transmitter onto your collar, you've got that. You've also got the power cable. It only unfortunately comes with one. You've also got two dead cats and these go onto the tops of the transmitters. And that's how it looks. Reminds me of like an old guy with like some uh, white hair on the top. On the sides of this guy, you've got a power button and two volume buttons. You've got the IR and then the USB-C that I've talked about before. You've also got this clip that can allow you to either clip this onto your collar or onto your belt, whatever you prefer. When you plug in these external mics, it can go and lock into place. So you don't have to worry about the cable pulling out and snagging or anything like that. It locks into place and the way to pull that out is to just simply push down and pull out. And also, you probably wanna see this turned on. So let's just push the button on the side. There you go, there's your screen. You've got a display, so this is the B transmitter. You've also got the A1. Then lastly, of course, is the receiver. One thing that I gotta note now is that these screens are very bright. You can tell on the A1 that it just dimmed down, so it does dim down after a little bit of time to go and preserve battery life, so that's great. But otherwise, in a bright environment like this, these are very bright displays, which is pretty fantastic if you're trying to read these in a bright environment. On these transmitters, you will get a visual indication of the battery life. You've got the channel that they're currently on. You've got the volume level, so you turn up the volume. You'll see that increases, or if you turn it down, it'll go down. By default, these are turned on to a high-pass filter setting. If you simply press the power button once, you'll see the light down here turns off, meaning that there is no longer a high pass filter. I'd recommend leaving that on if you want. Um, doesn't really hurt anything and it makes your audio sound a little bit better. This is a visual audio level. The same goes on this guy as well. You can see a visual indicator of both of the channels right now. You can see the channels that they're on as well as their signal strength here at the top and the battery of the receiver. On the top of the receiver, you've got a headphone output as well as the output for your camera or smartphone. You've got the same great clip here on the back of this. And a cool thing to mention is that these clips can fit right into your cold shoe or hot shoe mount on your camera. So if you're wondering how the heck do I mount this onto a camera? Well, this thing right here fits right into a cold shoe mount. On the sides, you've got nothing on the receiver. On the bottom, you've got an IR blaster as well as that charge port. But otherwise, the interface of this receiver doesn't really have too much to offer. If you press the power button, that can switch you between mono and stereo mode. But with that said, I'm gonna stop rambling and let's get you an audio test to get you a sample of how this really sounds. Switching between the two microphones that I'm wearing right now, listening to the Kamika, this is how that sounds as I'm speaking. But when you change it to the iRay UW10, this is how that sounds. So I haven't actually listened to this yet, how it sounds. So I'm probably putting on the screen right now how it really does sound. But um, with that said, 
This is clipped onto my collar with the transmitter, as you can see. You can go and hide it behind you if you really want. Holding it out in front of you like this, this is how that sounds. It probably doesn't sound as good because usually these microphones are meant to be tuned for when they are down here on your lapel. They can generally pick up more of the bass because it can feel the rumble of your chest. So that's good. But um, so it usually doesn't do the best holding out like this. And now I've got the lapel microphone plugged directly into the transmitter. As you can see, I'm all wired up. So you can hear the difference between that and the onboard microphone. I'm not totally sure how the sound quality of the onboard microphone compares to this lapel. Usually lapels have a generally slightly better sound quality because they are more engineered for what they're doing. Not that they aren't engineering the internal microphone, but usually they put a little bit cheaper. Not sure if that's the case here. You're the judge. So swapping between this lapel of the iRay UW10 and Kamika, this is that difference. There is more than likely some differences in the um, sound floor. There might be a little bit more hiss in one or the other. So just to give you an idea of that, I'm gonna stop talking for a second so you can hear the difference between my Kamika wireless lav system and the iRay UW10. So there you go. That is how the audio sounds when nobody is talking and you boost up the levels a little bit so you can hear if there is hiss and things like that. I will say that I have had some issues before with my Kamika cutting out. So hopefully this does not cut out too bad, if at all. If it doesn't cut out at all, then that is great and obviously ideal. That's what you're looking for in a microphone. So with that said, I'm now gonna go and hop outside so you can get a listen when you are outdoors and using this wireless lav system. And I'm gonna be testing the range on it a little bit so then you can get an idea of how well it sounds. So with that said, let's go outside. All right, and here we are now outside. I've got the lapel microphone still on. It's plugged into a transmitter on my waist. After I listen to the indoor test of the microphone, I can absolutely tell that the Kamika has a lot of fuzz going on compared to the iRay UW10. Just, I, I didn't even realize that it had that much static going on with the Kamika, but comparing the two, you really can hear a difference, which is fantastic. Also, while I'm out here, I just wanna mention that I can absolutely still see this screen. So here we go. I've now got the transmitter mounted right onto my collar. And as you can see, it's mounted quite high. It's not recommended to have it this high next to your neck because if I go down, I can hit it with my chin. So that's not great. You want to go and either put it behind your shirt so the clip is facing outwards or just lower it down on your collar on your shirt so it's not that high up. But this is how it sounds. It's quite windy right now, so I'm more than confident that it's probably picking up some of this wind and affecting it a little bit. If not, then I'm very surprised because most microphones usually pick up stuff like that without a wind muff on. But now, with this all being covered, let me go ahead and put the wind muff on right now. So putting this back on, here you go. Now you can hear the difference. It's still just as windy as it was just a couple of seconds ago, and you can hear probably the difference between now and before because the wind is still going by but because this wind muff is on it can go and disperse the wind and keep it from actually hitting the microphone itself which is great so with that said now since i'm outside i also want to go ahead and cover a real world range test to figure out how well this really performs out when you're walking away from the camera so here we go i'm going to be turning around turning to the side a little bit like that just so you can get an idea of even while you're moving around how this sounds. Currently, I'm standing about 20 feet away from the camera, maybe a little bit more than that, maybe 25 feet. And so this is how it sounds as I'm over here. I'm just gonna go move around, like I said, so you can get an idea if you're moving around from this distance, if it's cutting out. Hopefully it's not because this is not at all to the uh, furthest working distance that this claims to have, but there you go. So let me back up just a little bit more. I also want to mention that I am recording on my iPhone right now as well, just simply because if these cut out, then I want to be able to have that. So now I'm about 40 feet away from the camera. So I've almost doubled the distance and this is how the microphones are working at this distance. I'm also going to move around just a little bit, get the transmitters facing away from the camera so you can hear. At this point, I thoroughly expect that my Kamika has probably cut out at this point at least more than once. It generally does not have the best range, even though it has these external antennas, it just doesn't do the best, which is very disappointing because it also has a pretty far working distance. I'm gonna continue backing up a little bit more. 
go to about 60 feet. Here you go. I'm now at about 60 feet away from the camera. It sounds, again, I'm just gonna continue moving around. I apologize for the uh, repetitiveness here, but I just wanna give you a good idea of how this really does sound as you back away even further. Like the packaging says, this claims to have a 50 meter working distance. So at this point, it should still be working. At this point, I'd say I am probably about 80 feet away. And I'm just gonna continue walking until this cuts out. It's probably cut out by now, but let's see how long it takes me until it fully cuts out and just stops working altogether. Bruh, bruh, bruh. And I'm assuming that the signal has completely dropped out at this point. So there you go, way far away at this point. This is probably 150 feet away, I would say, maybe more. I am walking back now and we will have to see how that range test went. All right, so now that I'm almost back, what do you think, how to perform? Did it perform how the box said that it's supposed to perform or did it not? I'm flashing that on the screen right now because I don't know. So there you have it, there is the range test. I will say from what I've heard directly from my camera, I am a little bit disappointed. It sounds like the iRay UW10 cut out at around 60 feet, which is just so much sooner than I was anticipating and is obviously not great for the people who are looking to be a little bit further away from their camera or have to worry about turning around and all of that where you might experience cutout. So both of the receivers I forgot to mention are mounted in the same exact location and they're facing the same direction so there shouldn't be a bias between the two other than the Kamika does have the external antennas on both the receiver as well as this transmitter that I have folded out so that could have easily been the difference between the two but otherwise other than the range this microphone system has been a fantastic piece of equipment to use over the past couple of days that I've been testing it. It just has such clean audio coming out of it and it's so small, compact, easy to use that I could just see it as being a great beginner starter point if you are looking to get yourself a wireless lav without breaking the bank. So other than that range issue, I would say that it's probably a really good option to look into if you don't want to break the bank by purchasing a wireless lav system. However, if you are looking to do something a little bit more professional or you're looking to do some interviews or things where you're a little bit further away from the camera, then I would suggest looking into something like the Rode Wireless Go or something in the Sennheiser line of wireless lavs. Obviously, those are in completely different ballpark ranges for pricing, so I'm not trying to compare them directly, but I'm just saying if you want that reliability that you don't have to worry about cutting out, you don't have to worry about static, you don't have to worry about any of that, then I would probably go with something like that over something like this. And you'd be investing in yourself over the long term. But otherwise, if you are looking to pick up the iRay UW10, I will be leaving a link down in the description below where you can hopefully purchase it at some point. Honestly, I received this microphone kit back in like January of this year and it's now May. So five months later, and there is still nowhere that I can find online with a buy button where you can actually purchase the microphone kit. So it's very odd. I don't know why there is nowhere to purchase it, but if you can find somewhere to purchase it, it's probably in the link down in the description. I will say it's not an affiliate link or anything like that. So if you purchase from it, I don't get anything from it, but purchase as you please if you are interested in it. But with that said, that is pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you sticking around to the end here. If you liked it, make sure to let me know by clicking the thumbs up button down below, as well as subscribing for future videos like this. Also, you can check out some of my other videos by clicking right over there on one of those two. But with that said, that is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. And on that note, I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.